WBNE. Howdy, Yokes. Before we get started today, we just wanted to let you know this episode of Bacon and Eggs is brought to you by you. And for that reason, we need your help. You, the listener, you, the person listening to this podcast or watching this podcast right now. We need your assistance. We are doing a new Bacon and Eggs listener survey so that we can get a better handle on what kind of things you want to see from us in the future, what kind of content you want, if you want new or different merch, if you like our Monday shows, if you hate the regular show, if you just don't want to see our faces anymore. This is your chance to let us know personally and anonymously. There's a link in the description taking you to our new listener survey, and if you could fill it out within the next week, that would be fantastic. We want to get you the best content we can going forward. Tal is coming back on the show next week, so we really need to just know what you're looking for from us. We might be piloting a new segment or two in here, maybe make a couple of changes to format. We're just trying to keep the show fresh. We've been doing it a long time, and we want to make sure that it's the show that you, the listener, want to see and want to hear. So head down to the link in the description or typed on the screen right here and take out a listener survey. It just takes a couple seconds, and it would be extremely helpful. We can't. We do this podcast for you. We couldn't do it without you. We want it to be the best podcast it can possibly be for you, the person listening. So take a couple seconds, take the survey, tell your friends, take the survey, and listen to the podcast. You know, do it for your old pal, Ethan. Howdy, Oaks, and welcome back to Bacon and Eggs. I'm Tyler Carlin. And I'm Ethan Edchill. And today we're revisiting the MCU. Or maybe we're just talking about WandaVision? So reflect on all of it. And strap in. Because today we're bringing you an episode of Bacon and Eggs. <laughs> so guys directed uh, by us released whenever it came out on a 0.0 yeah. dollar budget so we are in a situation right now where we need to record an episode because we have to get ahead because i'm about to go on a paternity leave uh theoretically but, any minute yeah but our, <laughs> we had like a scheduling conflict where we can't record an episode on the film we watched with the guest that we want to record it with because uh they thought we would be on it. I don't know. It's a whole thing. So rather than take that film away from them, we're just going to talk about it with them next week. And this week, we're just going to talk about the old Marvel Cinematic Universe. We're going to talk about WandaVision because uh, what we never did that. We're going to talk about what? WandaVision. 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 Hold on. Let's see if we can hey, lock into goof. that. Let's see if we can lock into that Falcon the Winter Soldier morning en- energy. That like, hi, I'm Ethan Edgehill. Hi, welcome back to welcome Bacon, back to Bacon and Eggs. <laughs> This is the Falcon Uh, and the Winter Soldier. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, we get to redo that when we do Star Wars again. My name's Uh, Sam Elliott. I'm Sam C. Jones. I'm not a tenor. I'm a baritone. Um, But anyway, so we're going to talk about the MCU. Talk about a little WandaVision. Cool. And full disclaimer, we're also answering some questions from our patrons. As of right now, episode four of Falcon and the Winter Soldier has come out. Yes. When you hear this, Falcon and the Winter Soldier will be over. Uh, theoretically, yeah. Potentially. (laughs) Provided nothing weird happens. Yes. So, with that in mind. I don't know when you're going to be hearing this, honestly. I don't know. This could be like a thing that we put in the archive and it comes out. In six months yeah, from now. Yeah. <laughs> After the release of Hawkeye. Yeah, so so up to Falcon of the Winter Soldier, episode four, the one with the the You know you, you know. know. The one if with you're the like, thing. which one was that? You don't know. You know. <laughs> no, if you if you're like, which one was that? All, unless something happens in the next two weeks. Right. In which case which you're I, like, oh wait, maybe we didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> um got some good questions here what do you want to talk about first ethan we we never do this we never have a chance to just like to just chat about some just chat some film property give me a give me a blurb review of the marble cinematic universe the, from ethan edgel you just said marble cinematic universe marble. the marble cinematic universe um boy there ain't nothing like it is there there probably never will be anything like it ever again um, yeah i th- i think if 
if Avengers Endgame is the last, I guess it's Avatar now, but if like Avengers Endgame is like the last major blockbuster to break the box office record, I think that I think that's okay. <coughs> I really do. <coughs> yeah, it's like just a, a crazy experiment in movie making, wasn't it? Where they were like, we're going to string 20 however many movies together into one big block of movies. I don't, I mean, I know that that was the plan all along, but it wasn't really connected. I would honestly say until late phase two by phase three, they were like, yeah, yeah this but is, this is all a thing. You could say that, but it still holds better than star Wars. That's true. It holds water more than star Wars does. Star Wars is uh, full of plot holes. Yeah. Especially between like movie series that they made 20 years apart. Right. Uh, cause they're, again, it's, it's all the same. It's the same basic production team behind all of it. Like it's got Kevin Feige behind everything, every single thing, all of them. Well, it's not like we wanted George behind everything with star Wars though. Well, it, it, yeah. Okay. But like that's, it's the, the, they're separate things, right? There's nothing like it. That's this many movies. Cause like the only right. thing that comes close is like bond. Yeah. But those are all like very they're different. Just, they're just movies. They're, they're, they're not connected at all. There's no like. They're not even connected from like. Each other. Brosnan film to Brosnan. Right. Film. Yeah. They're just, they're James Bond. Right. They're just a bad two days in James Bond's life. Right. Pixar did this. They have like 23 movies all in the same timeline. Eh. Eh. Ev- everything is part of the Pixar theory. I mean, Ethan. sure. Okay. But like. When <laughs> you call me when not when it's an Easter egg, but when, you know, in in onward, it's Woody shows up and is like, hey, partner, we got to save the world <laughs> from magic. There's a snake in my boot. <laughs> <laughs> There's an asp in my robe. Uh, where is the message I sent announcing we're going to talk about this? Is it gone? No. OK, it's still there. Uh, so let's let's talk about what do you want to talk about? What do you want to talk about? I just want to talk about the Marvel Cinematic Universe. You don't want to talk about WandaVision. I, I honestly don't know what to say. Okay, that's fine. We can just talk about the MCU. I, like it feels like we've already talked about it, even though we have. Fair. Let's talk about the MCU. First um, question here: What's the biggest surprise you've had from the MCU? The snap. The snap. It's gotta be the snap. The snap. Yeah. Uh, I, although biggest, so trying to go biggest back, surprise like, is an interesting question because like if. Because you, there's also like you know what what has surprised you about the MCU, and the answer is like Thor Ragnarok, yeah, being good, right? Being right. like a crazy real movie after Thor: The Dark World was so <laughs> so bleh. so. Bleh. Uh, but yeah, no, it's a snap. I mean, that's that's the that most, was jarring. Yeah. Um, and then I think, of course, the John Walker thing. Is probably the next. Yeah, it's like it's like the snap, and then and then um, then John Walker doing the thing with the shield, and then probably Lamar getting thrown into that pillar. Yeah, yeah, they really packed it in there, which makes me worried that like they're gonna have to keep one upping themselves into these like wild, crazy, hysteric thing. Agatha all along, not surprising. No, no, but I don't think it was supposed to be like what. <laughs> the boner joke that was surprising i'm trying to think of of pre pre um infinity war like pre infinity war what, what am i missing have, right what was like no way uh vision picking up mjolnir was a big one that one when it happened in the theater i was like whoa yeah captain america calling mjolnir to him was that's very Infinity cool War, or that's Endgame. i know but like i'm just thinking of things things that aren't the snap right because like the snap right. is the boring answer right but i mean it's true though like there's there's not really anything like that i watched spider-man die in film right um it would be like if if in harry potter voldemort was like i killed all of them and one I, I won yeah i won <laughs> <laughs> and then we had to wait a year to see how they were going to fix it and the answer was time travel. 
Uh, almost, yeah, almost as surprising as the snap was the fact that they didn't just immediately fix the snap. It was like the whole the, yeah, movie. Like the blip, I think, is the thing that has surprised me the most, honestly. The fact that they just went with it irreversibly, right? Like they didn't go back to the moment of the snap and put everything back in right. place, right? Right. Yeah, I think those are my big surprising moments. Uh, I'm trying to think like in the theater, when was I ever like, no way. Uh, when Thor Ragnarok was good. When Thor Ragnarok when, when was they, good. When they that start playing a- immigrant song in Thor Ragnarok. <laughs> I was like, oh man, hang on a second. This might be but something. He's like, special. oh no, look at this. It's Thor in a cage. How do you think I'm going to get out of this one? And I was like, is that Jack Sparrow? <laughs> and he falls to the floor and just like insults Surtur the Hell Demon and starts, Played and starts playing Immigrant Song. And I was like, oh man, this movie might be something. <laughs> uh, Hella oh, destroying Mjolnir is a good moment too. Yeah, that I just is heard just being one. like, eh. this is nothing. This is who wants this? Uh, uh, this one surprisingly Gamora wasn't that dying. Big. Gamora dying was big. Black Widow dying. No, saw that me. one coming. Saw that one coming. Yeah. Um, all right. I think that's a good answer for there. What? character did you relate to the most three years ago and has that changed so we first reviewed these three years ago that's the last time i did like a proper mcu binge who did i relate to then who do i relate to now and the same for you i was a different person i was a different person okay we were both different I mean, yeah that, that sounded very ago. much like you were like no no i was a different person I was. I didn't have any kids then. Uh, I had both parents. <laughs> All two of like them. A weird reversal of fate there. Yeah. Um, uh, who did I relate to most three years ago? Spring 2018. I'm trying to think of like. This is around the time like Black Panther had just come out. Um, Infinity War was about to come out. But like. Did I relate to anyone in the no, MCU? Was I was, watching these movies? Yes, Infinity like, was about to come out, yeah. I think, I think, maybe not three years ago, but like early in the MCU, I think I would have told you that Iron Man was like a cool guy. Like that's somebody you should want to be for probably the wrong reasons. Yeah. Like the womanizer, gloaty playboy thing, I think is what I thought was cool when Iron Man came out in 2008. And now I don't like dudes like that at all. No, I relate much more to Iron Man three, Tony, than I do Iron Man one, Tony. Yeah. At this point. Uh, who do I relate to? I feel like I always thought like cap, I really liked his ideals and like what he stood for and sticking to your guns. I don't know. It's all Ant-Man for me now. Dude's got a kid. <sighs> trying to think. I feel like there's an obvious answer here that I'm missing. Ethan relates to Tony Stark in Civil War. I might relate to Tony Stark in Homecoming. Aunt May and Homecoming for me. Easy. I get hit on at every Indian place I go to. <laughs> <laughs> what? That's like a thing in that movie where they go to like the Indian restaurant and she's like, wow, they always give me free dessert here. I don't know why. And Tom Holland's like, yeah, I don't know why. I'm Tom Holland. I'm British. Might be like Fat Thor. (laughs) (laughs) Who has like been through some shit. It isn't uh, probably 100% taking it well. Maybe plays video games too much. (laughs) 
I feel that. No, I, I, I think it is um, some various iteration of of Tony Stark, who is just kind of like, like a been a through the ringer type. No, no. Oh. <laughs> like Tony Stark, uh, who lost his family in like some traumatic accident, and now sort of feels like he has to be some idealized version of a person in order to make the memory of his parents proud. Mm. Something I struggle with a lot. I believe that. I have a less serious Tony Stark related moment. Okay. You remember in Iron Man 3? Three? three? Uh, mm. Vaguely. <laughs> Two. Hey, man, Two? I've seen a lot of these movies at this point. Do I remember it? Probably if you prompt me, but. Two, I think. Iron Man buys strawberries on the side of the road and brings them to Pepper, and she's allergic to strawberries. I'm I am that moment where you're just trying like, really hard to do something nice, and, and you just keep messing it up. Yeah, yeah, that's me. That's my life. Tony's very relatable to lots of different types of men. Yeah, he well, really he goes, goes through, through it. such a dynamic yeah. change. Where he like starts off as this bachelor, and then by the end of it, he's Peter Parker's daddy. Yeah, he's Morgan Stark's daddy. Yeah, love you three thousand. Oh my god! What's so different about the MCU that makes it stand out from different superhero films? Um, they're good. It's better writing, better acting, better directing, better directing. Um. Better it, effects. It better effects. It they are allowed to be colorful, yeah. especially at this point. Like they're allowed to be colorful. They're allowed to be fun. They um, are all stemming from Iron Man and not the Dark Knight. This is not a hundred percent true across the board, especially um, when you consider things like Spider Man's the Spider Verse, uh, which is all of those things as well. It's still a Marvel movie. It's not an MCU movie, but it is a Marvel movie. Oh, was that the question? No, it was MCU. Oh, okay. But I was going to say because I I still think that the MCU is miles ahead of the pre MCU Marvel movies. I, th- I what I think about yeah, what I think about the MCU that's so great is that it. I don't want to say that it doesn't take itself too seriously, but kind of that. Like I feel like all of these other superhero franchises like the boys on Amazon or invincible on Amazon or the DC EU are like, Oh, we've got to ground this in reality in some way. You know, Superman would have to murder somebody. Batman's got to be like really dark and really ready to murder somebody. Yeah. And like they just don't tackle the murder somebody or constantly be swearing or well, they do. Like they do tackle violence. the murder somebody as of, Sunday as a very, very like, recent. I definitely get where people are upset about episode four of, of the Falcon, the winter soldier. It marks a turn. I do think those people are wrong. No, I think, I think but it's an important, I do get it. Like I understand that if you felt comfortable and safe with the MCU or MCU sort of, cause like, yeah, the snap was brutal. Right. But like there was never really a doubt in anybody's mind that they were going to bring those people back. Right. The MCU yeah. is sort of safe. They do sort of pull their punches a little bit. Well, they even did hit that he didn't decapitate Morgenthau or whatever. Right. He's yeah. just some nobody. Right. So like that didn't that they, they have stopped pulling their punches to some extent and I I think that's a good thing. I just they have to everything in moderation. They have to be careful about it. I agree. If in every episode there is some gory, violent murder, then it, it means will, nothing, and it's just another right. It's just another uh, uh, DC property, right? And that's why I think it was so carefully used in that episode. And like, if you're somebody that doesn't really like the violence, yeah, it had to be pretty shocking and jarring for you. But I, and maybe they should put a warning on it. I don't know. I'm not always justified or qualified to make those calls, but like, I do think that it is good to push people out of their boxes a little bit sometimes. Yeah. 
I feel that. Um, I think it's time for. I think it's also like we've entered a world where Marvel cannot not use their platform to make a statement. Right, but that that we've also entered a world where Marvel is a fully mixed media franchise. The MCU is a fully mixed media franchise at this point, for worse or for better. You don't have to experience the whole thing anymore, right? Like they right. they've made it very clear that there have been there were twenty four movies. How many there were? I still don't actually know. Before Phase Four ended, and now it's like, okay, this is a different thing, guys. It's this new. this it's... you can call this the end. That's fine, but like we're gonna keep doing stuff. It's all gonna web together, but it may not be a direct like one to 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 one thing. Uh. Returning to the Marvel Cinematic the Universe. The Maku. Uh Yeah, what makes it different? I, I think at the end of the day, what I think makes it so different than other superhero films is uh, they, they're just, they're done, they're done right. They're done in a way that's accessible, that's, if it's going to be edgy, it's edgy in the right way. Right, and it's not like edgy anymore either. Like they did edgy for a while, and that's really the era I don't love. Was like Thor: The Dark World and Winter Soldier, and you know the edgy era, right? Yeah. Then they were like, "Here's Guardians of the Galaxy," and people were like, Man, "It's kind of weird, but I like it." And they're like, "Okay, cool. Well, we're gonna do that for eighteen more movies. I hope you're okay with that." We're gonna keep like, with the. Silly it's gonna be stuff. fun. Yeah. That's what the that's the thing. Is it's fun, right? Like Yeah, I'm I'm enjoying I'm it. I'm enjoying it in ways that I did not enjoy Sam Raimi's Spider-Man 3. Although that I think is more fun than Thor the Dark World. I would or agree, but even I, I struggle to say the Dark Knight film, so I won't, but like Batman vs. Superman. The, the Dark Knight films are a completely different exercise. Category. And like I do think yeah. that there is a time and place for those, and I don't think the MCU is better than those. I think it's different. Yeah, like they're they're not like. I, I think it's weird to be like, oh, the Dark Knight just... isn't superhero movies, because like they're Batman movies, right? Like the, you, can't, you cannot escape from them being Batman movies. Yeah, at the end of the day, Christian Bale put on a Batman costume, right? Like, <laughs> and was Batman, and wasn't like, you know, Night. I don't Ranger. like when they try to. I, I don't like when they try to uh, justify the costume in some weird way. You know what I'm saying? Right. And I feel like the MCU does this a lot, but like, I, I just, I've never loved that where it's like, I need to wear the bat ears because that's where the antennas are. No, you wear the bat ears because you like, because you want to look like, like a bat, bat right? Like, right. <laughs> and that's what <laughs> I think was so great about Iron Man is he was like, I want to look like a badass. Like I'm going to paint I, it I, red I, and gold. Like my hot, rod. right. It could have been black and, 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 and scary, but he was like, I'm going to paint it red and gold. Like my Audi. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I want to be flashy. I want a 2008 well, RDR, Audi R8 is what I want. That's exactly what I want. Like, that, like people they, say money can't buy happiness, well, the thing but is, it can and this buy is, that. And this <laughs> is like, again, this is the thing where um, there's a great line. I did recently watch the movie Rush with Daniel Brühl and, and Chris Hemsworth um, mm-hmm. about the Formula One drivers. James Pretty Hunt. sure it's Kevin Brühl. It's Daniel. Pretty sure it's Kevin. Anyway, uh, about about Formula One drivers, and there's a line in there where Chris Hemsworth is like, "Yeah, men love women, sure. You know what men love? Cars." <laughs> and it's like, it's so true because this is like, it's the thing that they talk on TikTok about. Like, you know what men really want? A quest, a heist. It's also like they want a 2000 to find Atlantis. They want a 2008 Audi R8. So it gets you about the stupid entrepreneur videos that show up on YouTube ads where it's like, oh, do you want to check out my Lambo? It's like, I kind of do. I do. Yeah, I do Lambo. still want your Lamborghini. Yeah. <laughs> you, you got me on that one, bud. If you're trying to sell me your lifestyle. That part's working. I've got a very angular driveway, though. I don't know if I could do a Lamborghini. <laughs> your, yeah, your driveway <laughs> could not handle a Lamborghini. A Mercilago. Your driveway doesn't love my girlfriend's 2015 Sentra. It does love my new Lexus. Oh, look at you. I just, yeah. I can hit it dead on. I, as can, as can I. 
In, in the Mazda? In the Mazda. Best of class ground clearance. <laughs> You know what's got surprising the good cr- ground clearance is the uh, the Mitsubishi Mirage. It's like eleven inches off the ground. Tyler, you said that you when you were looking for a new car, you said I might buy a Mitsubishi. Are you aware of how bad of an idea that is? I would buy a Mirage. I would. I, I would. They you don't. Know e- I don't even think they make cars anymore. I think they do. They have the like Eclipse Cross. No, they don't. I'm anyway. pretty sure their only car for the 2020 model year was the Outlander. Then that's buy it. Mirage. That's it. I would do it in a heartbeat. I don't even know what a Mitsubishi Mirage is off the top of my head. It's got three cylinders. You see, you, you, my friend, are bad sometimes at being a guy. <laughs> the that's only okay. three cylinder car you should want is a mid 2000s Smart for two. I want one of those, too. I want all the little itty bitty cars. I want to turn my little tiny driveway into a park. Man, I drove one of those one time. It was the most fun car to drive. It's like a freaking go-kart. I've driven many Fiat 500s. I love those. I still want one of those very badly to this day. Yeah, I want one of these tiny cars mostly because... Unfortunately, I'm a freelancer and my credit's bad, so I'm stuck with the old Mazda for a while. (laughs) I also just uh, put $800 worth of tires on it. You better get some use out of those. Yeah, the the Pirelli Cinturato P7 all series... All, all season, sorry. I bought Pirelli tires for my car. That's pretty cool. Right? I don't know That's how Pirelli I felt. Is. I was like, I drove out of there and I was like, I got Italian racing tires on this car. They came over from Italy. Do you, did you like put it in neutral and kind of like, vroom, vroom, vroom. Uh, no. No? No. You never do that? I'll tell you, um, the Mazda CX-3 I drive may not be great at everything. Um, and the t- the zero to 60 isn't fantastic. The zero to 20 is fantastic. That's all that matters. That, Cause like I can, I can get in front of anybody if I'm trying to change lanes. Yeah. Like if, if, if I'm at, up next, like, cause you know, the situation you grew up where I did to some extent where well, you're coming down 419 headed toward 581 mm-hmm. and you're in the left lane in front of Tanglewood mall and you got to get over in front of the other person to get, you are the person that cuts. Yeah. Oh, yeah, because the traffic's backed up all the way to freaking Waffle House. Of course, (laughs) I'm the one that cuts. I get in the left lane. I get stopped at the light in front of the Wendy's and I just simply obliterate that person off the line. (laughs) That seems so mean. I'm already on the on ramp before he even notices I'm gone. That's fair. That's fair. I uh, I'm I'm what you call a defensive driver. I'm a. I'm a. I'm an offensive driver. I uh, yeah. You you honk the horn. That's, I do because people need to get out of my way. When somebody has done something that puts my life in danger, I honk the horn at them, and I don't feel bad about it. I I I never ever feel like somebody has done something to put my life in danger while I'm driving. Yeah, but like car accidents are deadly. I understand that. I just assume everything puts my life. So in if danger. somebody comes Nothing. very close to hitting me, I'm gonna honk my horn at them. But that doesn't happen to me that often. I don't feel like I end up. I think in a it does actually. I just don't think. He, I think you're too passive about it. I just. I don't think it happens that much. And I drive a lot. I drive two hours a day. It happens to me all the time. People Man. do not know how to drive here, at all. I want to ask you a question, Ethan. About the Maku. I want to ask you how you feel about the MCU's diversity or lack thereof. Um, I think I, I think if one thing will not age well with this twenty three film saga, it's that. Yeah, it's the lack of color and the lack of rainbow. Yeah, and women. Yeah. In in title roles, and we have one female titled film in all of the Infinity. Yeah, saga. with a with a co director. Yeah, but like every other great female character in the series is is a is a side character well black widow is getting a movie yes and that will be like they're they're definitely taking steps to correct it um yes whereas they're not taking steps to correct the fact that there are no gay people correct well wandavision had uh wicket who is gay okay but like they're, Wait, from, like, from what, I I understand, understand what I understand, they are actively like ignoring 
storylines with more than one character, like comic storylines. Correct. With more than one character. Yeah. I think, man, that would be, what if it's not going to happen, but what if we were like, at the beginning of this episode, we were like, you know, the thing that happens at Falcon and Winter Soldier and what it actually is, is Sam and Bucky get married in the sixth episode. <laughs> that would be wild. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be wild. Um, I don't think that's going to be what happens, though. Yeah, I don't either. I don't at all. But yeah, like so. So Bucky Barnes, uh, theoretically, in the comics is uh, and I don't know. I, I say theoretically because I haven't read any of the comics ever. Um, there are storylines where Bucky is a bisexual. And in this uh, <laughs> series, the Falcon, and the Winter Soldier, they make a point of being like, he's on a date with a woman. In a racial date. I mean, yeah, fair. But like it serves from what I can tell for the rest of the series. Utterly no purpose whatsoever for him to go on that date. Right. Like, no, like it matters no. not at all. And I think it would have been such a powerful scene if it was like Bucky's on a date with a dude and he just can't connect with him because he's 116. Right. Or whatever. Um what so there was a question here. Uh I think Black Panther was a really great step forward, though, of just like having virtually no white people in it except the villain and Martin Freeman. Uh, yes, the two villains. Martin Freeman's not the villain. Is he not? No, they save his life. He's the government. He's the government, but he's not like the villain in this one. They're just like he's the Tolkien white guy. Okay. Uh there's a question what character did I think was going to be gay? Uh let me tell you something right now. When I first watched this series, I was not woke enough. I was not aware enough. I didn't know what I know now enough to have like identified a character that I was like, I really thought that they were going to be. Well, so part of my, sorry, go ahead. I didn't, I didn't mean to interrupt you. Uh, but I'm trying to think like if I were to revisit it, what characters do I think that like could have been? Uh, Thor. Thor. Thor would no. be gay. Or at least Loki, by. Loki and Thor both. Right. Cause that's, they're like, they're pre pre Western people. Right. Right. They don't have our belief system shoved into them. Right. They just exist in God world and all the gods are gay. I think Bucky would have been a really interesting narrative if we saw it like happening as he was like becoming more accepted you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, Bucky, I think, is the low-hanging fruit. Um, who else? I think Strange could have easily been gay. I don't see any reason why he had to have Dr. Palmer. I don't see any reason why a lot of these people need to be in heterosexual relationships. Yeah, I, I for the most part, I generally think of these characters as asexual. Like I'm so disinterested in the the woman. And that's part that's of really it. Is it not? It's not that I think of them as asexual because I am a straight white man and I sort of you know still cannot a hundred percent see things outside the boundary of my own. Right, I still project. Think yeah, I definitely still project, and so like I'm just deeply uninterested in most of their romantic lives. In any way. Oh, yeah, I, I don't think there's like a compelling love story. And I'm sure there is, and I'm just neglecting. I mean, Wanda and Vision after WandaVision is compelling. But like outside of that, I can't think of like a truly compelling love story between two characters. It's not like I need to watch Iron Man because the way Tony and Pepper meet, the way they fall in love is just so inappropriate that he is like yeah, it's so dancing with his assistant in a dress he bought. Her. Right. Um, yeah, so it's just I don't personally spend a lot of time thinking about the relationships like that. I, you know, Scott's relationship is interesting because he has a kid, right? Like, yeah, um, he is divorced and has a child, and I think that is part of what makes him interesting. Yeah, I would agree. I also uh, love all the Ant Man characters. I, they're they're cursed with subpar writing. I think the writing is great. <laughs> <laughs> and man and the wasp is cursed with subpar writing uh peter quill i believe is also um 
is also uh, LGBTQ in some stories, if I remember yeah. correctly. Um, and him and Gamora, I just don't care about their relationship. Still to this oh, that, day. Yeah, that's the supposed to be compelling love that story. That it just right? never got me. Yeah. if I felt like in the second one, they were now they were together. And I was like, oh, okay. I guess we're doing that now. <laughs> um, Rocket would be a good LGBTQ Rocket character. Having- Rocket being like proudly ace would be a good moment for that me. too. Uh, let's see. I don't know. I see. I, I just, like you were saying, it just doesn't cross my mind that much, but I, I think obviously this representation is, is very important and it needs to be there, but it is not, like it doesn't need to be there so that I can see myself on screen. Right. It needs to be there so that, other people and I really hope that it just continues to get better um yeah and I very much don't want it to be seen to be I mean you know me I don't want to seem to be giving Disney any single inch but uh (laughs) I don't I don't want to be to say like oh well you know getting all this representation in there is hard we just need to give them time like no it's we we are officially demanding it at this point like it needs to happen um I mean they can do a scene where where they say like I mean, we, we talked about it in the Falcon Winter Soldier episode where they can say, like, this is America's legacy is war crimes and police brutality, essentially. Then then they can make a gay character. Yeah. And it, and it's, it needs to be one of those things where, like, that character is like, I am a homosexual. Right. Like, he needs to come he out. Needs to, yeah. He, 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 he or she. He, she or they need to come or out they. and say, you know, I am LGBTQ. And I identify actually, with this thing. I, like, like say, because you, you can't like, oh, well, you know, we had this random sign character who was gay and, you know, we never said anything about it. Do the Pixar thing where they're like, oh, this, this centaur is gay, but we didn't really talk about it. Nickelodeon does that. Yeah. Where they're like, oh, SpongeBob is gay, which is like, I'm glad that SpongeBob came out and said that, but it feels a little cheap. SpongeBob's never like in a romantic relationship. Right. You never show SpongeBob in a, in a position like that. Right. Uh, I do think this is a, a good segue though into like, if you were like, I cannot stress enough. You should read Dreadnought by April Daniels. You should. Yes. It was fantastic. If you're like, the, the, man, that book was fantastic. The sequel is fantastic. LGBTQ plus in the MCU or in superhero stories. That's how you God, do yeah, it. God, yeah, you just do it. You just do it. And you let some of them hate her for it. Right? Like, yeah. you absolutely let this this be the problem. Right. Have you finished the sequel? I have not finished okay. the sequel, no. Okay. But I mean, the first one, I think about the first one every day of my life. You'll think about the second one every day of your life, too. I'm very excited. So, to uh, yeah, this Dreadnought, Dreadnought and, and the sequel um, Sovereign, Sovereign are perfect examples of how to do LGBTQ in a superhero fiction without really do it without really, really doing the superhero fiction much at all. But that's what makes a great superhero story is character driven. Like, yeah, in those books, when they get to the superhero stuff and they start talking about throwing tanks, I'm like, oh, this is boring. Superheroes are so hard to write. Like, like right in text yes. is what I've learned is the like that just like the, the montage of them learning their powers is not interesting. <laughs> right. And um, then I jumped higher. And the problem with that is uh, the person who wrote it has is so desperate to like avoid copyright claims of any kind that the superheroes depicted are all just great value brand to the yeah. max. Like. Dollar Tree superheroes. What I think is so interesting is is in any superhero story you can write Thor, because Thor is a Norse. Yeah, god. Thor's public Thor's domain. public domain. Yeah, you can write the Great Gatsby. Right. Oh shit! Hang on. <laughs> Idea, real quick. <laughs> Nick Carraway carries Mjolnir. Yeah. Hang on. Hang on. I'm just gonna write the Great Gatsby. Where it's it's exactly the same, but <laughs> Gatsby's a superhero. <laughs> Gatsby is Thor. No, uh, Gatsby's Batman. 
Uh, diversity. Um, yeah, they've they they have come a long way uh, since 2008, um, and they have a long way to go. But yeah, if I was Marvel, I would be reading books like Dreadnought and being like, April Daniels, hire that person now. Yeah. Tell us how to do it, please. What do I hope? They're free on Audible, by the way. Um, those books. Yeah, they're free on Audible. I, I cannot recommend them enough. Uh, like, I've read a lot of books this year. If there's one book I've read that you have to read, it's Dreadnought. Yes. You do not have to read the Great Gatsby prequel that I just read. <laughs> you you could read this one. This one was pretty good. Beautiful, foolish endeavor. <sighs> it's better on the second pass. It's, I still... It leaves me... Sad. All right, Ethan, what is the most rewatchable MCU movie? There's a couple. Uh, Homecoming. Guardians of the Galaxy 1. Uh, Ant-Man 1. Thor Ragnarok. Yeah. Iron yeah. Man. Black Panther. Black Panther. The ones that don't get too heavy, really. Yeah. Like, at, at, all the time am I like, you know what? I love some Peter Parker content. Very few of that time am I like, oh, I want to sit down and watch Avengers Infinity War right now. <laughs> right? Like. I need, I need the snap. I need the snap in my life. I need a good, <laughs> like, I need a good hurt. What is. Okay, so. Hot take edition. What is the least rewatchable? Um, hot take, Ethan. So it can't be something that you're known to hate, and it can't be one of the like obviously D tier Marvel movies. Oh, hot take, least rewatchable. Yeah, Endgame. Really? Yeah, least rewatchable by far. Oh, I love Endgame. Um, Endgame or Infinity War? Yeah, I, I like any of the Avengers movies, honestly. I think Avengers one might be the least rewatchable for me. One and two. And I have a hard time caring about anymore. Um, Cause three and four are so good. Three and four are so good, but they're just so much like if I want that, if, if I want the hurt of the snap, like I'm going to go watch marriage story or something like <laughs> I'm going to really, I'm going to really get into it. Right. Because like I, I, I want that in the context of the MCU. Like I want the story, but it's not one that I'm going to put on and be like, ah, Yes. Would love this pain would love three hours of, of, of sad and montage and battle right now. Like I would rather watch return of the King than end game. Oh, I disagreed end um, game all day for me on that one. But like, I'm, I'm not going to pick up either of those out of nowhere. That's part of a series for me. Like, uh, What's your most rewatchable hot take edition? I think you said Ant-Man, which I think is your hot take on that. That's my hot take? On most rewatchable, yeah. Unless you have a different hot take on most rewatchable. Um, I just don't feel like that's a hot take. It's so good. It's like a high it's so It's so easy, yeah. yeah. It's like watching Ocean's Eleven. Yeah, um, so good. Like I, I, it, I don't think it's uh, it doesn't. It's not even top ten Marvel movies for me. But if I'm gonna pick one, like, oh man, I got you know be on a plane for two hours and I have to pick an MCU movie. Like it's gonna be one of the ones where I'm like, yeah, okay, Ant Man, that works. Out of all the ones I said, though, I think it's probably at the bottom of those for me. Hot take. Most edition. rewatchable hot take. <sighs> Iron Man three. Iron Man three was Iron what Man I was three. gonna say. Yeah. Uh, the other one being Captain Marvel. Yeah, I've had very little to th- thought about Captain Marvel, honestly. It doesn't come up in my mind a lot. Like, I, I remember would say the loving one... it. I saw it three times in theaters. I remember loving it. But I just uh, don't I know... think about it ever. What do you, in reality, actually end up rewatching the most from the MCU? For me, um, it's Guardians 1 and Black Panther are the two that I think I revisit the most. I really don't like 
Thor Ragnarok probably a lot. I think I've seen Thor Ragnarok the most out of like non Iron Man ones. Like Iron Man and Captain America, the first Avenger were on like television back when I still watched television. Right. When it was on cable TV and I'd be like, oh, this is something to put on. You know, because uh, I've seen Thor Ragnarok probably six or seven times. Um, I mean, the last time I watched an MCU movie was Far From Home. I think that's in theaters for me as well. Yeah, like that was the last time I and the last time I watched before that was when they all came out like. I don't think since we finished the rewatch that I've gone back and revisited any of them. I know. I'm curious, like as we get further into this year, I don't think I'll be able to revisit the MCU as a whole until we take a proper break from the TV series. Yeah. Uh, which is going to take a while because there's a bunch of them. They're also not like, this isn't a thing that I do. Like they, I do still think of them as one unit, right? Like I'm not usually going to sit around and be like, I want to watch a movie right now. Let me pick a random. I am more likely to pick a random Star Wars movie or a random Harry Potter movie than I am a random Marvel movie. I, I'm not the same way. Star Wars is a little wishy-washy, but Potter, I'm going to watch one through eight pretty much in one sitting. Yeah, I mean, I, but that's the thing. Same thing with the MCU for me is like if I'm like, oh, I'm going to watch Marvel, then like I'm committing some time to that. Right. Like, yeah. I may not get through the whole thing, but I'm going to try. Right. It's like watching Grey's. So therefore, I don't do it. Like, I don't know. I just watch other stuff. Uh, let's see. There was a good question from James. President Jim Swindell wants to know, uh, is a petition to recast T'Challa? Uh, yeah, a lot of people want that. like to see? I wouldn't like to see. Would not like to see. T'Challa recast. Fair. Uh, I don't really think your opinion matters, though. I agree. My opinion doesn't matter. Um. But it feels in bad taste to me. If if they recast T'Challa and the community's behind it, then I'm behind it. Well, and that's, I think, where it's really coming from. Really? Because these petitions are not like a bunch of neckbeard white people being like, oh, we need to recast T'Challa. I want to see Black people, or, you know, Black Panther in, in, in you know, as, as T'Challa. It's like I have n- no idea who I would cast because the first name that comes to mind is Michael B. Jordan. And that's what a lot of people are saying is just just do it. Just like just, just do it. Right. It. Just go for it. Just just say see what happens. Just say, right. Just say this is T'Challa. Right. Like we all know. Like we all. Right. Cause, and this is the thing. Right. Like because at one point I was like, oh, man, I can't recast Hulk inside the same series. But like I'm an adult. Right. Like I. Th- I, I I can understand, right? Somebody can tell me that's Bruce Banner, and I'm like, okay, cool. Okay, cool. Yeah. Like it took me forward. a long time to get to that point, but at this point, I'm definitely I'm like, yeah, okay, I can rectify the fact that that is Bruce Banner. I understand what's happening, right? Like I'm smart. So I think you can be like, like he walks in in the costume, and sure he is like T'Challa, what's up? And you're like, cool, got it. But Michael B. Jordan, I feel like that's a little on the nose. I mean, no, I think I think there's so much opportunity because there's so many black actors who don't get to get cast. And no, stuff that's like absolutely true that I've never even heard of that. Like, if you're going to run the gamut and find somebody, do it. There's a, the problem is there's the have, first uh, next first person I thought of was Daniel Kaluuya <laughs> from Get Out from right to the Black Messiah, who's in Black Panther, who's in Black Panther <laughs> as well. <laughs> uh because I mean, they really pulled out the stops on that one and got a lot of fantastic black Gambino. actors. Donald Glover as no, I don't think so. He's not regal enough. But he's also like he's still alive in the MCU. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I think that one you could pretty well write out though. <laughs> I, I, yeah, but like that's a Sony thing. Like you even have an out on that. That's true. Yeah, I don't think he would be the right choice. No. Uh, although, I mean, if he gets jacked, uh, he's a good actor. Like, why not? Um, I don't know. I have no idea. 
Because it would have to uh, be either somebody super famous or somebody that no one's heard of. Denzel Washington. Like, cause that's the thing is it has to... John David Washington would not be a bad call. You're not wrong there. Uh, I don't know. Whoever you want, I'll watch it. I would, yeah, I'm not going to be upset if they do it, honestly. Like... It would seem wrong. To me, I mean, just narratively, like the culture that I was raised in, and I which is not the same culture, uh, it it would be in bad taste, and I would just pass the mantle to Shuri, which I think is a is a smart move. But I also Well, so why why is it in bad taste? Is I guess the question I'm asking. Because it was like the symbol of like unified peoples and the actor who portrayed him passed. It would be like recasting Leia. It would be, it would feel wrong to me. I guess I don't really feel like it'd be wrong to recast Leia. If you, rec- if you recast young Leia, that's one thing. If you were to recast Leia in rise of Skywalker, it would feel so wrong to me. I guess. Cause like when they recast Han, in but I think I think the point solo, that was different. I think you made an important point there though yeah that is completely different though you made you made an important there import, important point there though is like T'Challa was this unifying factor right we only got one movie with T'Challa as the main as character. the main character like I do still think T'Challa is important like that yes right like I because so. I can see arguments for both sides. Like, I don't see a problem, though, passing the mantle of T'Challa instead of passing the mantle of Black Panther. I think the other precedent set in the MCU, though, that kind of makes me hesitant is that T'Chaka dies. And that matters. Yes, but off-screen death sucks. Yeah. That really takes the teeth out of that character. Well, and even if you opened it up, it would feel in bad taste to me if you like opened up a movie at a funeral and there was pictures of Chadwick Boseman. That's yeah, that is the way to not do it. That would feel in bad taste to me because it, it would have to be one of those things where like they talk about it but don't like show it, right. and that sucks always. Independence Day two sucks, and Will Smith's not even dead. He just didn't feel like doing it. Well, and and I think it's tough because. Black Panther is such a powerful character. It's like, what could even kill this guy? You know? Yeah. I and mean, realistically, like a like a bullet. Outside of the suit? Yeah. Or just like really well placed when he's not wearing the head. Yeah. I don't want to think about what kills T'Chaka or T'Challa. I don't, I don't 100% have a problem with them recasting T'Challa. I, I definitely get the, the outrage like when... Not the outrage, but like the the outcry when it first happened, when they were like, when people were like, don't recast it, don't recast it. But it's been months now, and I can see people kind of coming back around the other direction, being like, hang on, maybe. I don't know. I think I think it, you know the person who does it has to understand the legacy and the shoes that they're walking into too. Yeah. You know it can't be. Well, this why I don't think. Okay, I, here's here's one here's one that wasn't weird, and it I think worked better in the long run a lot of people disagree uh they had to recast dumbledore i think it absolutely worked better in the long run yeah i i think uh the first dumbledore could not have done order of the phoenix or no half Blood prince no <laughs> and michael gambon not reading the books does not matter no michael gambon killed it yeah it does not matter um but right yeah that would have been weird if they were just like there's a new headmaster <laughs> it's not Dumbledore, it's not anymore. Dumbledore anymore. It's, <laughs> it's Dumbledwob. <laughs> Oldest <Evil> Dumbledwob. <laughs> yeah, Played by so, Michael Campon. <laughs> it's a different guy, though. We swear. <laughs> it's not the same. But I don't know. That doesn't feel to me the same as T'Challa. Well, from what I'm seeing from the from the people uh, putting the petitions is that T'Challa as a character is just as important as the idea of Black Panther. Like having the the 
person that started that still be around? And I think that's why my, they would look at Michael B. Jordan is not only because he is an extremely prominent black actor, but also because he played the brother or the nephew he's or so whatever good. brother. I don't know what he's, he is. He's so good in that movie. Cousin. 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 Yeah. He, but he's family, right? He's like, yeah, just feels a little too close to home and he's dead. Killmonger. Yeah. Eric. Like his character is over. I'll tell you who they shouldn't cast. Martin Freeman. <laughs> Martin Freeman. Yeah. <laughs> Scarlett Johansson. <laughs> <laughs> that would be bad. That would be not good. Very, bad very bad. Marvel. Very bad. <laughs> bad optics. Uh, what else you got? Uh, thoughts on casting. Who's good for the role? Who wasn't? Thoughts on the Bruce Banner roadie recasting between films. Future Black Panther after Chadwick Boseman. Uh, we just started with Future Black Panther. Um, I don't think there's a casting decision I'm unhappy with. <sighs> I... Mm, I think Benedict Cumberbatch could have played someone else or they could have made him British. Like if they were just like, oh yeah, Dr. Strange is from New York. He's from London. I'd be like, okay, that's fine. Right. Yeah. Um, but it's still, it's just like good to have him there. Right. Like. Yeah. I want him. Right. There. Yeah. Maybe as someone else. I, though. I, I, at, at, at Infinity War and onward. I like him as Stephen Strange a lot. Like I'm very excited. Yeah. Very excited for the new movie. And he's, he's he, the accent has gotten better. And the great, the great thing about the MCU is that for me, especially there is not source material, right? Like, I mean, there is, but like, it doesn't, there's no consistent source material. Right. It's all, it's not, it's not seven story. books, you know, it's hundreds of books, right. hundreds of books that aren't all drawn the same or by the same person. Right. Uh, um, so that I'm is the thing is any like other bad cast, any bad casting. I mean, Scarlett Johansson sucks at acting. She's not. She's not great the in these role in this role. Gwyneth um, Paltrow. Gwyneth Paltrow. Like just complaining about the white women though, and that's mm, I don't like doing that. Uh, I just don't like. I do not like Black Widow as as the way Scarlett Johansson does. But she also sucks, like as a person. Yeah. Um. Uh, let's answer the first question though. Um, Mark Ruffalo crushed it. Edward Norton yeah. is big shoes to fill. Edward Norton, I mean, uh, Mark Ruffalo crushed it. He does so well yeah. as both Bruce Maybe and the not Hulk. as He's not so good as Edward Norton's Bruce Banner, but... No, but like, he's whatever. good as his own Bruce Banner. Yeah. Like, he really came to life in, in Thor Ragnarok in a way that I did not expect. Like, Baby Hulk was very good. Yeah. Um, And the roadie recasting, I love... Um, Don Cheadle. Don Cheadle. I, I could, you know, I could not think of it. I was, I was about to say Basher, <laughs> Basher Tar. I just want more roadie content. Yes, yeah, this is what's frustrating. Like Iron Man One, we really get a lot of Terrence Howard. He's a really interesting character, and you get a lot from him. And then like, we, like maybe Iron Man Two. There's a lot of roadie stuff because he gets the War Machine suit. But like, <coughs> what, where's the War have, Machine TV show? Right, that's what I'm saying. It's like now that we have TV shows, it's like. You don't get to have a side character who doesn't get the spotlight at least a little bit. Which I'm shocked that he's not in the current one, honestly. He was in the first episode. Right, but like, I'm shocked that he has not shown up in the armor. Yeah. On either side. To like shut something down. Right. Yeah. Shown up like a side, like side by side with, uh, uh, oh my God. What is it? John Walker. I, uh, yeah. I don't think it's out of the question that he does show up though. When they like when 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 John and Bucky fight, because he's clearly in the sh like they've they've shown him to be in the show. I don't think it's out of the question for him to, to show up in the suit and like push him apart and be like, "Hey guys, none of this is what Captain America would have wanted." Yeah, y'all need to stop, both of you. I don't think John, I, I'm going to say I don't think John Mark makes it out of this. I do think he makes it out of this and will be a recurring character. Uh, uh, yeah, I, I think that him, I think he has to survive, right? Like I want him to survive. Yeah. I want, because more. that's the, that's the commentary. Right. Is that he gets, away with he gets away with it? Yeah. They have to let him, they have to say that they have to, right? That's, that's the key to what, <laughs> right. <they've said. laughs> 
Um, but is there a bad <laughs> casting decision? No, there's some truly inspired casting decisions. I think what it is is they do such a pre seeing them in the role. There have been lots of casting decisions where I've been like, nope, we're not doing that. Chris Pratt, uh uh-uh, uh, uh uh, he can't be a superhero. Uh, Paul Rudd, he can't be a superhero. Robert Downey Jr. is a drug addict. Yeah, can't be a superhero. Uh, Chris Evans was a superhero already. <laughs> yeah, he can't. He can't cast Chris Evans. He was a Human Torch. That's his um, legacy. <laughs> but like, it's just right up the gamut. Like, everyone is so so good. In like Tom Hiddleston is so vitally underused as Loki. Like you have a you have a god tier actor in sitting in that role, just sidelined constantly. Yeah, like that is that is where, truly where the MCU is. Is like even all of the like Bradley Cooper playing the freaking raccoon. Bradley Cooper made more as a uh, Rocket Raccoon in like one movie than he did in like three Oscar nominated oh, sure. films. I'm he did, sure. <laughs> but that's what I'm saying is like all of the Guardians of the Galaxy are these these great casting choices right up to dave batista yeah who like who would have thought uh i'm trying to think is anybody like that was casted been like (laughs) i'm at bray just made several leaps there behind the scenes thinking about dave batista the wrestler being a good children's entertainer thinking about the rock and then thinking about the rock and fast and furious and then thinking did i send you the poster the the freaking like the next Godzilla movie is Godzilla versus the Fast and Furious. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know what can stop Godzilla? Family. <laughs> uh, I'm trying to think Cancel, if there's any Cancel, actor Cancel, who's been like properly canceled that I have to say like, well, whoa, yeah. Then they cast so and so. I can't think of anybody. A lot of people in these movies. Yeah, there's a lot of people in these movies. They've managed to do okay. I mean, freaking Anthony Hopkins, like, playing Odin. So good. What? Kate Blanchett. Jeff Goldblum. (laughs) I think think Taika Waititi was just like, I'm just going to call everyone. I know, but it's just like random characters that are, yeah. It's so good. So good. It's so good. Um. Yeah, I can't think of anybody that I I don't love in their role. And again, it's because it doesn't suffer from the Harry Potter problem where it's like, oh, this person's too old. It's like, <laughs> yeah, Alan no, Whitman's that's Iron Man. Thank you. <laughs> um, where did the divide between Mar- Marvel and DC really start to widen after the Dark Knight, after the first Avenger? It was after the Dark Knight. 2008 is when it happened. Dark Knight versus Iron Man. And I think in 2008, you would have predicted DC was about to own the superhero scene. It was after the Dark Knight Rises, though, because that movie still slaps. A lot of people disagree with that take. A lot of people don't like Dark Knight Rises. Either way, it was after that franchise ended and they were like, hmm, 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 Man of Steel. We can remake It was when Man of Steel came out. Yeah. That was whenever that was. Oh, yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Whenever Man of Steel came out is when it was. They were like, oh, we're going to be on this grind too, except we're bad at it. Yeah. We can do what Christopher Nolan did with Zack Snyder, right? <laughs> we can do no. what we can build. They built this in a cave with Robert Downey Jr. <laughs> we've got, we can do we've this. got Henry Cavill. Have you seen his jawline? <laughs> Have you seen his classical work? And it turns out being hot and having muscles does not make the only thing for a superhero. I mean, Robert Downey Jr. is not muscly. Yeah, but like uh, Henry Cavill and Jason Momoa and apparently Ben Affleck, ben Affleck <laughs> who got Jack to play Batman. Dream MCU director. Uh, Sorkin. Ryan Johnson. Uh, Ryan Edgar Johnson Wright. Is my dream MCU. Yeah. Well, yeah. Well, Ryan Johnson is really the one. Um, no, there's a bunch of them. Yeah. Ryan Johnson, Edgar Wright, I think would make fantastic. I would still love to see Edgar Wright's Ant-Man. Right. I, like don't release the right cut. Just have him redo it. <laughs> there's no right cut. I know, but like, <laughs> um, I want to see less Russo brothers movies. Uh, less Whedon. He's out. 
I'm on like anti Joss Whedon TikTok. I mean, they already right replaced now. him. I know they did. Uh, yeah, I think the Russo brothers. Uh, yeah, more step more away. Favreau, less Russo. Uh, I do I, more, again. I really like uh, the Russo brothers movies. Like I do, I, I do still think that um, Civil War in general was a cop out. Um, I want I want Greta Gerwig. Yeah, direct yeah, that would be cool. MCU movie. Um, Greta Gerwig directs Miss Marvel is what I want. I know it's going to be a TV show. And it's not going to be Greta Gerwig, so we're not going to get that. But that'd be very cool. That's, that'd be very cool. That is what I want. Um, Jordan Peele. Jordan Peele would be awesome. More. I want more Ryan Coogler. Yeah, more Ryan. I Coogler. want Ryan Coogler to direct a a, a a a an integrated movie. Integrated is the what wrong the, word. Holy yeah. shit! That's not what I was trying to say. Uh, it, but like a, a, a one of the one of the ensemble the movies. ensemble movies. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was not um, thinking integrated from the, the from the race perspective. Just the 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 characters together. Right. No, I think you're good. I want the uh, I want the white people had to have to listen to Ryan Coogler make a movie. Right. Like I want to see what happens in with Tom Holland and Ryan Coogler have to do a movie together. He um Ryan Coogler just did something I watched. Yeah, Ryan Johnson, oh. I would say, is the big one. Um Bryce Dallas Howard. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Bryce Dallas Howard. Uh, there were some people in the that did um, freaking Mandalorian that I would like to see as well. Give Tarantino an MCU movie. Just see what happens. <laughs> that would be wild. Quentin Tarantino's Deadpool. <laughs> like, just do it. I like. Brad Pitt plays Deadpool give, for half the movie. Give uh, Ryan Reynolds the directing spot in MCU Deadpool. Yeah, like, I think he deserves it. What? I think he deserves. Just it. give him, give him, you know, a camera, and and a hundred million dollars, and tell him that you're gonna air whatever he says. Right? Like, just see what happens. Um, I think Matt Shackman and Kerry Scoglin have both proven that they deserve movies. Yeah, hundred uh, percent. Um, Paul Feig. Who is that? He did uh, a simple favor. No, he did something else. Yeah, he also did uh, Last Christmas, Ghostbusters, Spy, The Heat, Bridesmaids, Unaccompanied Minors, okay. and I Am David. Maybe not that guy. Um, less hit, less uh, less hits than misses. Yeah, less Russo Brothers movies, more other people making movies. Yeah, I, I really like this uh, just diverse cast of directors. Yeah. Just, I want diverse directors. I also just want a bunch of different directors. Yeah, let, let more women make these movies. Let more people of color make these movies. Uh, just because there's a white man in it does not mean it has to be directed by a white man. Um, yeah. And let uh, let a woman direct a movie by herself, which is something that DC's done more than you, Marvel. Yeah. Um, Black Widow was directed by a woman by herself, um, which is a good step forward. But no reason. Care, there's no reason Captain Marvel needed a male co-director. It just didn't. It just didn't. And it, it suffered for, for it. it. Yeah. Yeah. And you, you can tell there are punches. It's, yeah, it's disjointed. Yeah. Um, uh, let Samuel L. Jackson direct his own movie. Oh, that'd be fun. Uh, and also, I, I would like a Nick Fury movie. Yeah, I would like. I would like Nick a Nick Fury. Fury movie. You can recast young Nick Fury. Yeah, that's how you can, you can bring Michael already, B. Jordan in that way. Well, they've already CGI'd young Nick Fury, so they've got to just stick with that. They don't. I know, but um, what are your thoughts on the rumors of the Spider-Man No Way Home casting? I think I what truthfully rumors? believe the rumors that uh, Andrew Garfield and uh, what's his name from Sam Raimi will be back. Uh, Tobey Maguire. Tobey Maguire. I think you're more likely and to see him in this multiverse thing. Well, I, that's my thing. Is I think if they are there, 
it will either be as like an ensemble thing at the end or they just won't be a big part of it. Like it'll be like a cameo. Uh, yeah. <sighs> I don't think they'll be there to stay. I think Tobey Maguire would be like, I am very expensive if you want me to put on this freaking spider suit. Well, again. so the, the crux here though is uh, J.K. Simmons being J. Joe to Jameson. I don't think that's a crux. I think you can just have that. I think you can just have that, but I also, I think you could be like, oh yeah, no, to have Tom Holland be like, yeah, I'm the third Spider-Man. Oh, and just like in universe. Right, like, he's like, yeah, I got the idea from this guy who gave it up a while ago. It's been a long time. He, he got killed by Electro. And there's also rumors like Jamie Foxx and... Uh, uh, more Jamie Foxx in everything, please. Yes. Alfred Molina be coming back. Uh, more Alfred Molina in everything as well. Yeah, I'm totally cool with that. Um, yeah. Willem Dafoe needs to... He's not in the MCU. I feel like he needs to be. That's true. That's true. He's got a pretty prominent role huh, in the DC films, but a lot of people do both, so I don't see he does being any reason. Yeah, he's uh, one of the... the Aquaman people. Oh. Um. Yeah. Um. I think uh, Catherine Hahn was also a great idea as uh, the Agatha Harkness. No, as the um, the Spider Verse Doc Ock. Yes. I uh, guess I think Sony could just be like, "Hi, um, she's in this." Just like an animated Doc Ock. No, just have it be. In the middle of like a live action be movie. Catherine Hahn. Well, she's Agatha. But yeah, but like, who cares? <laughs> Chris Evans is the Human Torch. Uh, Keep those people away from it, please, God. Keep those people away from it. Stop. Stop trying to include the X Men. Stop trying to include the, the Fantastic Four. Uh, the, the Fantastic Four will be there. The X Men, I think, they may hold off on. God, I don't. I'd rather have the X Men. I know, but the Fantastic Four is like the first family of Marvel, and the X-Men is like, who wants to sell these comics? They suck. Just um, so. give the people Deadpool at this point, honestly. I think they have. They've said that they're going to work him in. Deadpool 3 will be in the MCU. Yeah, like, so just just do it, I guess. I don't know. I'm just tired of like hearing about it. I'm pretty sure in Doctor Strange, Ryan Reynolds is just going to walk through a portal. Well, so like, the, oh, he's here now. The thing is, is they bought, they bought Fox, right? And they have done yeah. nothing with it. Yeah. They like actively again. I come back to the boner joke thing, right? Like they actively have been like, <laughs> screw you guys about it. So like, just do it. Just do it. Cowards. Just either do it or don't do it. Right. But like, why did you buy it? If you're not going to keep making the movies. Right. Cause you're not going to make uh, Fox 2000 movies. You're not gonna make Fox searchlight movies. If you're not going to, if you're not going to use it for the freaking, superheroes you bought like why did you buy it to just kill it just so it's not there anymore just kill it just so it's God. no more competition uh we got a question thoughts on the shows past like agents of shield agent carter uh shows present wandavision falcon winter soldier and future like loki and what if are they worth the watch are they a necessary watch to get a good mcu experience is the focus too much on shows and not enough on movies lately nope i think the shift to shows was the 100 percent correct move um, yeah, yeah, I guess. I don't know. I still want to make movies. I also want them to make movies, but I think bite-sized MCU content is what we need. Yeah, for sure. I don't think you need to watch Aiden's Field or Peggy Carter. No, I'd like them to decanonize those. Yeah, I, I mean, like, Aiden's of Shield is like a, like a guilty pleasure type show to watch in my mind. Like it's, it's it does truly... nothing for me. Well, that, that's fine, like, but I, I like Fitz and Simmons. Yeah. Otherwise, yeah, I don't care. Um, I don't like Peggy Carter. Because she fell in love with Cap when he got muscles. I just, I just, just as a character, I just don't care <laughs> at all. <sighs> um, but you know, the shows are cool. Um, Make them all the same length. 
these nine episodes, six episodes, seven episodes thing. Right. Yeah. Stop doing that. Eight episodes. You get eight weeks. Yeah. Eight or ten, please. Thank you. Yeah. Um, six episodes doesn't feel like enough, right? Um, what was I gonna say? I was, I was gonna make a point. Let's come back around to something. No, I don't think the the focus on the shows is a problem. I think it would have been better if they could have stuck to the original timeline. What do you mean? Where like the movies came out in the right order with the shows. They did. No, they didn't. They kind of did. I remember watching Agents of Shield, and there's. No, like I'm talking about the new shows. Episode. Oh, the new shows. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah, no. That's frustrating. Where like Doctor Strange is already kind supposed of to have been out air right now. Yeah, timeline's a little up in the air right now. I feel like, although if the Falcon and the Winter Soldier ends and like Deadpool just shoots John Walker, I. Okay. 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 If that's what we did. That's the way we went. And then they're it. like, okay, well, and, and uh, we'll be back in six weeks with Loki. <laughs> right. Bye. <laughs> Bye. Have fun. Um, not having not released Black Widow already is pure cowardice. Yeah. And it needs to be. Um, it needs, I just need to consume it so that we can be done with it. Right. Like I, I, I do. Like I hope that it streams. At the end of the day, because I want to actively encourage people not to go see it in theaters. I think it is streaming. They've announced it. Have they? Streaming. Yeah. I don't know. Because that was why they kept delaying it for so long is they refused to let it stream. And so I will be encouraging people to actively not see it in theaters and not give them money for it. Um, uh, I think the first movie since the pandemic just hit $100 million at the box office. Did it? What What was that? Uh, uh, Godzilla vs. Kong. Oh. I didn't honestly know that was in theaters. I have oh, yeah, no idea what the state of theaters is right now. I, I are, are our theaters even open? I don't know. They weren't before Godzilla vs. Kong came out. Because once Caitlin and I were both vaccinated, we were kind of like, hey, maybe we should go to a movie. And then there was they were there was nothing playing. Nothing they playing. They were showing like one I, movie a night at Tanglewood. We have uh the Grand. I know they're open. They were showing like one movie a night. For two days a week. Watch the monkey. Um, but yeah, like the, oh, that's really they should definitely have already put those movies out. Um, they don't need the money. Do you have any final thoughts on the MCU or anything else you want to say? <laughs> yeah, we just revisited it. Now we have to watch them again. I mean, that's what these shows have been doing. Honestly, is me being like, I might have to revisit these freaking movies. I have to watch. I'm gonna have to watch Iron Man two and you know Age of Ultron and Thor: The Dark World and I gotta sit through them. No, but like those are the ones you're like pointing to. Like, hey, you gotta watch these movies. It's not yeah. like, hey, go watch Thor Ragnarok. It's a bunch of new cool Thor Ragnarok coming. Uh, although I will be see, I will be interested to see what the Loki show makes me want to watch. Uh, me too. I'm I'm curious. I'm curious where they're going to point you to with that one. Um, do you have any final thoughts? How do you? How'd... I really like the MCU as a thing. I, I like that it exists. <laughs> yeah, me I've too. Definitely, that's the main I've thing. I've definitely waned on my like obsession for it. I think when we really went through it, and obviously when Endgame and, and Infinity War came out, it was like super top of mind. Uh, right. I'm okay with it not being that anymore, though. Right, like. Yeah, I'm okay, I, I'm okay thinking about it once a week for th- 40 minutes for 40 minutes. And then, you know, like, I don't need another year of, oh, my God, but the snap. Right. right like that was that was uh, it was fun. We did it for for like seven years uh, and it was fun. It got exhausting, though. Yeah, to like constantly I, I, be I like- thinking about that stuff. So that's what I think the show's done a really good job of me being like. Man, that was really cool. I'm going to think about this and talk to people about it every now and then. But like, yeah, just going to sort of kind of move on away for next week. Right. Because the part of the show's magic is knowing that something else is coming. Right. And you don't have to wait three months or a year. Right. Or some unterminable, unterminable amount of time that nobody has any idea. Right. 
So I think that's the really interesting thing with these with this weekly content is that, yeah, you, there's a new episode next week, right? Like a six week break for them to do a Star Wars thing is going to be like, oh, man, I would love that Loki show to come out, wouldn't I? That'd be cool. Then I could watch that Loki then show. Then I could watch that Loki show. The Bad Batch. <laughs> I feel weird. Like, I feel like because like WandaVision is like an interesting name and like the Falcon and the Warrior Soldier is like a mouthful. I feel weird just calling it Loki. I feel like I need to like add some words onto it. <laughs> <laughs> so like I got to be like, oh, you want to watch a Loki show? The... Hey, Thor, it's me, Loki. And even, even like, you know, I'll be talking to Caitlin and I'll be like, hey, you want to watch the Marvel show? Because like, I'm not going to sit there and be like, do you want to watch episode four of the Falcon and the Winter Soldier? Just because it's so like, bleh. There's a lot to it. A lot of syllables. I can't, I can't, because in text, I can just be like. One division. In text, I can be like F, W, and S. Or F and S, W, whatever. W, S, whatever. Yeah. F, ampersand, W, S. But I can't say that out loud. Right. I got to like the Falcon and the Winter Soldier. There's no I, good, I like, no good accurate because call, just calling it Falcon feels wrong. Yeah, that would be wrong. The Winter Soldier show. That would be weird. I don't like that at all. Yeah. So, like, but, but again, at the same, it's just like, I feel like I got to call it that Loki show because it feels weird just being like Loki Hawkeye. I, where does so among film franchises? How do you rank them? What are your like? I don't know. Top three? I don't, I don't know. I don't know how this works. Film top three film franchises. I guess for me, like what immediately comes to mind is like Potter, the MCU, and Star Wars. Yeah, those are the big ones. <laughs> and I. I I've gotten to a point with all three of those where it's like, I just like all three of these. And sometimes I'm in the mood for one. Right. I also like and sometimes Lord of I'm the Rings the and Jurassic Park and the Fast and right. the Furious. And the monkey. What? The King Kong. Uh, no. <laughs> Deeply uninterested. <laughs> um, yeah. No, I mean, they're all they're all cool. Yeah, I just I, I don't know. I like these franchises. I like engaging with them. I am sort of ready for them to not be the only thing anymore, though. I don't know. I feel like there's a surprising amount of stuff. Like the death of the mid-budget movie is happening slower than I think you were predicting, because like Netflix is putting out a mid-budget movie every week this year, and some of them are are, are bad, straight up yeah. awful. Uh but I mean. Most of the uh, Oscar nominees, there's 10 of them, were mid-budget movies put out on streaming services. Right, and people just aren't watching them. I mean, but you can. Right, but I would also like to be able to interface with the with people on these things. Yeah. Like, I do look forward to a time when none of this content comes out for a while. We had a year of it. I didn't. Yeah, but we also had a year of no content. Yeah, of nothing. <laughs> nothing. You get nothing. Like I want, I want Disney to be it. like, hey, we're not going to remake or franchise anything this year. Just for like 2023. We're just giving everybody a break. Okay. No Star Wars. No TV shows. I just don't see it happening. Yeah, I know. But like, <laughs> I, I just need people to talk about something else. I, don't, I think I've been pleasantly surprised the amount of people don't talk about this stuff. Like, now obviously, they just talk about it. And there's always a, a forum for it. But I, I really think post-pandemic, there's been a lot of, at least maybe I'm just finding it more. Maybe I'm like discovering that community on TikTok, but like arms open film discussion. Right. Like I look, I look forward to the day when, um, Honestly, when there are like $100 million movies that are new. Like entirely yeah. new? Pacific Rim. Okay, but like good ones. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we're not going to get 2008 again for a while. But I do think like I, 
something else has to come in, right? Like the MCU is still dominant and still around, but like something else has to show up. I really just wanted to be something that doesn't have source material. It's rough. We got so close with Fantastic Beasts. Yeah, but it's so bad. It could have been so good, though. Because I think that's a great way to do it, is to like... And obviously this is why the, the MCU's had this longevity, because the source material doesn't matter all that much, and like you, you have just these continually good stories. Right. But like a, a, a theater experience of a new blockbuster movie that is not... That is tied to a universe you know, but isn't like... Nobody can get mad about it, right? Like Avatar 2. Yeah. Avatar 2 might be sick. Yeah. Avatar's sick, man. Too much hate for that film. Anyway, I don't really have anything yeah, else to say. say. You want to wrap the show? Yeah. Um, Right. This is a regular show. We have to like do the things. I know. You can't just yeah. be like, deuces. This has been... Deuces, bye. This has been Marvel. See ya. Um. <laughs> We here at Big Internet Eggs have graphics by Vaishon Brandon, graphite.vmb on Instagram, music by Andrew Scott Bell, andrewscottbellmusic.com. We are a member of the WB&E Podcast Network, a thing that Tyler and I own, where we make great podcasts by great people for great people. They're a lot of fun, and you should listen to all of them. You should listen to all of them. Which one should and they I listen to, Tyler? I, I Honestly, I'm not sure, but here's what I'm going to tell you to listen to. This is one of our newest podcasts on the network. I love them. They're fantastic. Every chance I have to interface with the hosts is a wonderful experience for me. So if you don't listen to Curly Critics right now, I'm going to be upset. I'm, gonna, I'm genuinely going to be upset. I think you should go to their feed on, on iTunes or your favorite podcatcher, download every episode of Curly Critics, and listen to every single one. And enjoy it. Um. And there's a preview for Curly Critics right here. As this episode was recorded, Tyler was on an episode of <laughs> Restriction Section tomorrow, probably. Maybe. I may have at one time been on an episode of Restricted Section with high school, a Case Spring High School alumna, Grace Ball. Wait, really? Yes. Grace Ball's on the Restricted Section? Yes. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> She sent me a Facebook messenger message today and was like, I saw you were going to be on the pod. And I was like, podcast. Yes. What the freaking heck? Yeah. That's I wild. Like, no way. I'm actually a little nervous about Small it now. World. I wasn't nervous. I know. I was not in the slightest bit nervous. But then when she messaged me, I was like, ah, I will mess this up. Small world. No, you're the, you're the ringer here. You're Tyler from bacon and fucking <laughs> eggs. <laughs> they might be bigger than us i don't know how this works i don't i i don't pay attention to potter podcasts let me find out let me see how many ratings they have then i'll leave them a positive review anyway let's roll this out i've been ethan Enchil. he's been tyler carlin until next time arrivederci avengers assemble